Welcome to Whistler Community Church. This is our last Sunday service of the year. Um, this has uh, been quite a year and I really appreciate all that you've done to stay committed to uh, the body of Christ and to be faithful in this time. So um, this Sunday, we usually this last Sunday of the year, we do testimonies and so we have some stories from our ministry partners. We have uh, Josh Dooley from Young Life in Pemberton. We have the Miller family, Tamara and Wiley from Name in, in Mount Curry. We have the Nyack family uh, who are ministry partners in India. And then we have Jeff and Tracy who serve everywhere and anywhere with YWAM. So um, thank you to everyone who's uh, taken the time to, to follow these services online. And thank you for your faithfulness in giving this year. Um, you know, it's hard to imagine, but back in April, we were having meetings and like, what do we do if all the giving just, just dries up? Um, are we going to uh, put a pause on our building program, uh, lay off Kelvin and myself? All those options were on the table, but um, despite, you know, some challenges, uh, you guys uh, were very uh, faithful and committed. And so I just wanna say thank you on behalf of Worcester Community Church and thank you for your vision for the kingdom here. Um, so let's get into some worship. Hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust. The sweetest frame, but holy trust in Jesus. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in Savior's love. Through the storm, 
can start the Lord Almighty. Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before you. Our God is the Lamb. Hello, Whistler Community Church. Josh Dooley here uh, from Pemberton Young Life, uh, area director for the Sea to Sky. Um, I'm just wanted to give you guys a bit of an update and uh, just share on what the Dooleys are up to and what we've been up to with Young Life uh, and a little bit of uh, prospect we have going on in 2021. Um, I wish I could be doing this at the church, uh, but I look forward to the next one being um, maybe sooner, but uh, at least in the, uh, the new building, which is uh, what a wonderful thing that'll be. But um, yeah, Dooley's, uh, oh actually, before I start there, I'm in my garage, the communal garage at our, uh, at our complex, uh, a couple of rambunctious kids up, upstairs, so uh, I would get this done no other way, so happy I have a little quiet space to do this in the old trunk of the, of the vehicle. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I just want to uh, give you guys a little bit of an update, the Dooley's are doing great, um, as many of you um, are familiar with, uh, we're in a time where we just you know, miss our families and our friends, and we uh, are excited to move past all of this pandemic in due time. Um, but yeah, looking to just hunker down as our family uh, and enjoy the holidays. Um, for those of you who know and don't, or don't know, uh, it's myself, my wife, Allie, our son, who's two and a half, uh, Phineas, uh, or Finn, and then our seven-month-old daughter, Ophelia, or known as Fee, or the one who doesn't sleep. 
Uh, that's just a, a running title right now. But um, yeah, we're doing great. Uh, wishing we could be with friends and family, uh, as you all are. But we're we're thrilled for just the blessing that we have uh, in this in this beautiful town. So um, but yeah, just, so that's us. We're doing awesome. Um, thank you for all your prayers and support, uh, financial support. Um, reaching out for a phone call, uh, I'm, it's always so um, so welcomed. And uh, yeah, please continue that encouragement as uh, as we just move on through this year. Um, and again, let me know if there's anything I can be doing for you all in terms of uh, praying or just uh, updating on a particular uh, area of our lives or young life. But um, yeah, I just want to kind of run back from the fall. Uh, some of you may have seen our, our fall fundraising video, which... Uh, I think I explained a lot of this, but um, we were able to uh, get really creative early, or sorry, late in the summer with um, just one, figuring out how this fall is going to look because it's going to look a lot different than the falls we've had in the past, and it certainly has. Um, normally, we would be meeting uh, from early September straight through till Christmas break and then pick up again all for the rest of the year. Um, Wednesday nights with a, group, a large group of teens called Young Life Club. Just the night of craziness, super, uh, super fun games. Uh, just it gets kind of ridiculous, but it is uh, our aim is to give teenagers the best week, or sorry, the best night of their week. Uh, and club does that, and club's super beneficial for for us just to get to know and build a relationship with with teenagers. But it's also a time where we can, uh, at the end of the night, sit the kids on the floor and just have a leader communicate their own story, but as well, as well a beautiful story from the gospel. Uh, and just intertwine that. So we go through a gospel proclamation um, uh, throughout the course of a club run, which is basically like the fall and the spring uh, semester. So uh, with that not happening, we just decided as a coastal region within Young Life, to just shift our focus to a, uh, a core group base. And that would just mean smaller group hangouts, but, um, but we're, we had a goal of, um, it makes sense to us, but every leader a rabbi. And that's the idea of, Every leader um, getting a group of kids around them uh, and not not waiting for the opportune time to almost share who Jesus is, but just to get bold uh, and just in everyday hangouts from if it's biking, if it's grabbing a coffee, it's video games, if it's disc golf, whatever it could be, um, just to say like just to step into that role of saying, "How's your life?" Uh, and this is this is my life, and this is where Jesus has affected my life. Um, so it's been really cool and lo lots of great conversations have come from that. Um, I feel personally it's very foundational uh, to kind of slow down from the big high number craziness of club. Uh, and this is a way where we uh, almost miss sometimes of just like slowing down and really building a, a great relationship with kids on a, on a slower paced level. But also it, it provides just more of a one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And I think with kids over the course of the summer and the, and the fall we realize that we can't just meet in big groups. So this idea of let's go for a walk and talk, a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, or maybe just two friends and, and myself going out, um, that was became, kids became very comfortable with that because that was the normal. So we were thrilled that we could focus on that. We ran a few large events uh, outdoors when before regulation shifted and we had uh, great numbers of upwards of 50 kids running around town uh, to trying to solve all these clues, getting chased, getting scared. Uh, with the police involved, they were... They were meant to be involved, um, but hey, it can happen. Uh, so that, that was really great. We had a great group of student leadership uh, teens, kids I, I was with from grade eight, and I got to experience them now in senior high. And it's a beautiful just this pro, like progression of, of just walking alongside a group of teens uh, in their high school uh, years. Um, so now they're like this little core group of, um, of a student leadership team is what we call them. And they've been planning things, planning events, and working together just to help make Young Life great for those kids who are, are stepping into high school. So that's been really, that's been a huge blessing for me just to see um, that trajectory of, of teens go from sitting on the floor, sorry, I just got to adjust my screen here, uh, sitting on the floor at club to uh, standing up front and having a leadership role. So that's been a, a real huge uh, um, victory to see. Um, we've also early September, or sorry, early in the fall, uh, launched our campaigner group. And our campaigner group, it's for any and all kids, but primarily we have a lot of Christian kids that would come out. Or, I mean, Pemberton doesn't have a, a whole lot um, that we you know are church-based, but uh, 
we, we, we would have those teens there as well as teens who are just like hungry and di- want to dive into the word as well as um, we, we, made, we watched a video series called Reckless Love that really explained how, um, you know, give us this understanding of God's love for us, but also how do we in turn uh, turn around and apply that to our, our peers um, in so many creative ways. So that was a really good series over the fall. Uh, we're looking forward to um, getting back to that uh, with the regulations, uh, how they shifted for youth come the new year. Uh, the last few have been over Zoom, which everyone's, you know, well tired of that. But uh, yeah, kids will be waking up at 7, or not waking up, but being at campaigners uh, up at the church here in Pemberton at 7, uh, 15 in the morning on a Tuesday before school. So uh, that to me just shows a great commitment as well as just uh, interest in getting to know uh, who this Jesus is more and more. So that was a really great thing, and that goes really hand-in-hand in, hand in with our, our small groups, uh, just that intentional focus. So, yeah, super happy we could have those running uh, for teens, um, and we'll pick that right back up uh, January 4th, if that's when school's back in. Um, but, yeah, that was, that's just kind of a little bit of, of, what we're, of what we're getting up to. It's been really cool to kind of have this motto flying around within Young Life Canada of, Young life always happens. So even though there's been a, a global pandemic, uh, the uh, amazement of how creative this group of people I work with on how to do a, uh, a, a nationwide um, Zoom club over YouTube Live, uh, pulling that off and just a bunch of other things that have been uh, super fun to see. Um, yeah, it just gives me so much confidence that no matter what it is that we're facing, we'll be able to still find a way to be in the lives of teenagers. So, uh, yeah, really happy with that, that my, my job allows that, um, and to still be employed is, is wonderful. Uh, but yeah, just, uh, again, thank you so much for your prayers and, um, and your, uh, yeah, again, financial support is, is, is so huge, uh, to just keep this running. We're entering our 13th year here in Pemberton. Um, and I think that's the 12th in Squamish. Uh, so we're, we're looking at Whistler this year, but just to think of the amount of uh, things I've seen come and go uh, over the course of the years has been huge. So to see Young Life entering its 13th year uh, is just a testament to what uh, great community support uh, and care for a staff person does. So thank you for being a big part of that. Uh, John also asked me just to share some of, uh, some of the good word with you, and I'm more than happy to do that a little a little challenge um, uh, and a a little thought and challenge and encouragement. Uh, And one thing that I've been um, really uh, thinking about more is just this uh, idea of those around us that are struggling. And um, I'll take us to Matthew 22, uh, a verse I'm sure we're familiar with, where it says um, in 35, one of them, an expert in religious law, uh, tried to trap him with this question. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Uh, Jesus replied, this is a big one. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. Uh, This is the first and greatest commandment. And second, it's equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. And I know I've read that over many, many times, and it really just kind of slapped me in the face recently when I read through it and just seen that, uh, yeah, yeah, love your Lord, your God. Yes, I understand that. I've, that's, I've been told that. I've been, I've been practicing that to my best of my abilities. But then where it says a second is equally important, and that is to love your neighbor as yourself. And I kind of got hit with this thought of if I'm not loving my neighbors, uh, well, am I not loving God well? Um, so just, the, I was just wrestled with this idea, or I mean, this, this challenge of um, how do we, how do we make ourselves available, especially in a, a season of COVID where um, so many people are affected by isolation and loneliness and, and the inability to be with people that they, uh, that, that care for them. Uh, and I think as a church, we have a, a huge calling to, um, one, present ourselves to people, become available for people, and to um, just impact those people. Uh, how we do that is, uh, Bob Goff said, you know, we often think we have to cross the ocean uh, to change lives. And he said, but start with crossing your street. 
Um, and now many of you are probably amazing at doing this in your communities, and, and that's awesome. I, I just I I hope you share the the wealth of your knowledge. Um, but just this idea of those around us, uh, do we know them? And uh, this idea that can we truly love people that we don't know? Uh, so how can we uh, make a, ourselves available to get to know them, um, to to care for them? And obviously we're restricted in many ways, but I just even thought like if you wrote a letter to a neighbor you've never met and just said that you, you know, you're here, you're here for them and you're praying for them and that you love them, um, I think within that, those, that writing, they would see a different worldview than that they may have ever experienced before. Like, who is, no one's ever offered to pray for me before. Who is this person? Um, so I just think, yeah, how can we make ourselves available uh, over this Christmas season and then just kind of continuing uh, to just really love um, our neighbors as ourselves? And uh, yeah, I just want you to kind of wrestle with that because maybe you're amazing at this. Uh, I had a great conversation at our committee meeting last night with Craig Smith. Uh, just where he said he's so intentional with uh, meeting the people around him and writing down their names so he knows how to communicate with them well. And I just think, yeah, that's awesome. And if you, are, if you have tips, uh, share them with, uh, with those around you. But to, uh, yeah, put into practice this idea of we can love God, uh, you know, in our, in our own homes. Uh, but to, to do that equally as well is to love the people who are right beside us. Um, so I just hope you encourage you with that, especially just, again, with this time of, of I think we're going to see some mental health and just this, I, this, these troubles just running rampant after this pandemic is, is solved. So how can we as a community, a church body, a global church, come together for those who are, who are in need? How can we love our people, our neighbors well? Um, yeah, and just challenge, have a few conversations a day, a phone call. One of our committee members was in the hospital for two months and someone was telling her, hey, I'm so sorry I couldn't do anything for you. And she said, you phoned me. You phoned me regularly and that did the world for me. Um, so again, put yourselves out there. Uh, I'm gonna do the best. There's people in my community that I don't know um, super well right now. We moved here a few months ago. Um, and yeah, I just wanna challenge myself with that because that's I've come from a, I, I'm coming from a place of uh, speaking this to learn. Um, and again, I was rocked when it was like, okay, loving my neighbors is equally as important as loving God. So I think I've been failing on, uh, on that, that uh, the latter part there. So um, yeah, so thank you. Just a little, little uh, encouragement and challenge for you over the Christmas break and, and going forward. Uh, thank you so much again for all of your prayer and support uh, for us here at the Dooleys and uh, just Young Life at large. Um, and excited to uh, share more um, development that we have for Young Life Whistler uh, in 2021. So hopefully I can do that in person. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Wiley Miller. My wife Tamara and I are with North America Indigenous Ministries. How can I talk about the grace and power of God? First of all, I didn't come to understand God's grace until late in my 20s. And at that point, I had burned out trying to do enough to please God. Shortly after that, I went through a fairly dark time in my life. And uh, I don't know it was, if it was my grandmother's prayers or my mother's prayers or at some point my own prayers. Um, what came into play was the, uh, the parable of the sower. It talks about the seed that's... Uh, scattered on the ground and um, the worries of this life and the uh, desires for other things come in and choke out that, uh, that, that seed and make it unfruitful. And then there's also the seed that um, understands the word and produces a crop, some 30, some 60, some, some 100 fold. And I just understood that only God could make that happen in my life. And unless a seed dies, it remains only a single seed. So, um, praying that prayer for God to make that happen in my life was uh, must have been a, a pivotal moment. But uh, I, I did come across a resource that finally, eventually, helped me propel me out of my introverted, perfectionistic state and. Um, one one spiritual conversation, you know, where um, the Holy Spirit was 
empowering me and, and flowing in the conversation was so, so exciting. And, and then another conversation happened and, and, um, fast forward to, um, yeah, almost 20 years later, half, half a year ago, um, my wife and I moved to Mount Curry. So the day after we moved here, I was hit pretty hard with depression. And the month before we moved and the month after we moved, I had a lot more headaches than usual. But uh, asking for support from others in prayer has, has uh, lifted these from me. And uh, we all need each other. Um, one way that uh, I've been able to uh, make friends in the community uh, before COVID came, uh, fairly recently here, was uh, picking up hitchhikers. One guy that I met, we hit it off really well right away, and uh, I was able to resolve some of the um, some of the difficulties he had between uh, or perceived difficulties he had between culture and Christianity. Some of the uh, barriers that people had put in 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 the way, and. Uh, he had quite a few children that that had been coming to Sunday school, but hadn't been able to had hadn't been able to make it due to COVID, and uh, I was, we were just able to um, build a friendship, bring a Christmas hamper, and um, look forward to uh, continuing on building that relationship. And um, it's just so good that you know Jesus Himself was full of grace and truth. And uh, I want to be doing my best to uh, fulfill both of those. So Merry Christmas to all of you. And uh, thank you for all your support and all you do. Thanks. Hi, my name is Tamara Miller, and I just really want to say thank you to the Whistler Community Church for your support of our ministry with NAME, North America Indigenous Ministries. I am the Director of Recruitment and handle kind of all the application process and the training of missionaries that um, want to work with First Nations people, both uh, short-term interns and long-term uh, full-time staff. I am grateful for NAME because it's through through this organization that I got to know who Jesus is. When I was in seminary um, doing my master's in Christian studies, I had one semester that was a heavier workload than others. And I just, I began to doubt who God was. I began to feel that there could be human influence into the scriptures and to translation and interpretation. And so, so that caused me to doubt who God was. And so that doubt lasted for about three weeks, and I'm glad to say that I came out of it. But many years later, um, I was able to go to Israel, and as we stood uh, and looked out at Qumran Caves, God hit me so strongly with um, his presence that it just felt like a ton of bricks hit my, my chest. And God said, um, look at what I've done to preserve my word. Who are you to doubt me? And I just, I just stood there and tears were just streaming down my face. And um, I felt that all I could do was kneel down and just let the presence of God sit in me and to impact me and, and to sense what his power truly was. And I'm so grateful that he met me there and he reminded me of what he has done to preserve his word and that it is, it is his truth, it is the truth. The history between First Nations people and the church is, is not a positive one, and there's a reason why many people mistrust and dislike um, the church in general and the Bible and Jesus. And so when I enter into conversations with First Nations people, um, I'm often just praying that God would give me his words, his wisdom, his insight, and in my mind, I'm just I'm praying as I engage in these conversations. And I'm grateful that there are times where I feel like he has directed me um, and used me. And there's times, I'm sure, where I have not depended on him as much as I should. 
COVID uh, restrictions have really impacted my role in recruitment and training. I had a full schedule with uh, many different engagements uh, booked and then all of a sudden my calendar was completely empty and for a while I felt a little bit lost as to what to do with my time and um, what recruitment would look like in the midst of all these restrictions. It was, it was hard to have to turn people away and say, no, we can't accept you to come and do ministry. And lately I've been just wondering how to do my job, but um, God has just opened the doors in certain areas and shown me that he will continue to work in the midst of what we feel is a, is a lockdown. He is still present, he is still working, and he's still doing what he needs to to reach out to people. Once again, we'd like to say thank you for your support of our ministry with name. We ask that you would be in prayer for the local First Nations people, that you would be praying for us as um, his workers in the area. I ask that you would also pray for more um, people to be involved in First Nations ministry. We are excited to be here in Mount Curry and to be a part of this community and we are settling into this area. Look forward to seeing you guys sometime soon. My name is Abhijit Nayak and my wife uh, Madhumita here and we have two boys, Isi and Jesse Nayak and we are currently living in Abersford um, and I, I was born and brought up in a small village uh, in a province called Odisha um, in northern part of India uh, which uh, has 42 million people and uh, mostly Hindus uh, I grew up and when I was 19 years old God called me and I accepted Christ and uh, went uh, to uh, ministry with operation mobilization and worked uh, with OM for six years and then I went on to um, study in different Bible schools uh, in India. I was born in a small town, uh, the southern part of India. And uh, in 2000, uh, when I was 12 years old, I accepted Christ. And when I was about to finish my graduation, uh, I, I was called by God to be a full-time uh, full-time missionary for his work. So in 1998, I committed and promised, I committed my life to God saying like, I'm going to serve him full-time. And after my graduation, I went to Bible college and uh, studied for four years, completed my Bachelor of Divinity. And after Bachelor of Divinity, I went to youth with a mission and worked for two and a half years where I was about to learn more of how to build up the personal relationship with God. So both in OM and YBAM, we were taught um, to live by faith and depend and trust uh, on God every day. Um, and uh, so we learned how to live by uh, faith. And then in 2005, uh, we got married and we then went to uh, pursue higher studies in India and then we also worked in different places in India as missionaries or in teaching in different Bible schools until 2010. And in 2010, I got an opportunity to pursue studies in US. So we as a family went to US in 2010 and we were there until 2013. So leaving our country in 2010 was just like the situation that we are facing today because of COVID. So 2010, when God opened the door for uh, us to go to Pasadena, and uh, that time our boys were like three years old, the oldest one and the younger one was eight months, leaving all of our families, our parents, our brothers and sisters, our relatives, and friends, it was, it was just like a COVID. But God was so faithful to bring people in our lives who can support us, who can be with us, and who can help us to make a home for us. And, um, and our faith journey was more stronger uh, 
where we can we can see God's faithfulness in our lives. So not knowing uh, where we will stay and how we will uh, survive, um, we came to Abbotsford in 2013 and we only knew uh, John and one or two people um, uh, in Abbotsford and since 2013, uh, um, seven years now, uh, we are in Abbotsford and we are um, uh, involved with a ministry called STEP and uh, we are so grateful to Whistler Community Church for supporting STEP and supporting us as missionaries and uh, last year we remember last year uh, December uh, by now we were in India for two months uh, December January and February before COVID started uh, we came back to uh, Aversford uh, and uh, since then uh, we I have not traveled we have not traveled gone anywhere and uh, personally uh, I was and we were very worried uh, the, during this uh, uh, seven eight nine months how we will survive because we depend on churches we depend on people uh, to support us and the ministry called step so we partner with different ministries and we network with different churches and we have a step uh, campus uh, discipleship training school um, in india we work with indigenous national pastors uh, in india for church planting and discipleship so discipleship um, program that we work with uh, the, there is a ministry called discipleship international we partner with for discipleship program so discipleship and counseling, those are the two areas that I strongly believed God has called me and he has been using me in these two areas. And in 2019, I, it was such a privilege for me to join the Discipleship International Organization. Best, uh, the head office is in uh, New West Minister. And they have a curriculum which is called as equipped to serve where we teach uh, others or the pastors whoever are willing to make disciples for jesus christ as it was commanded in matthew 28 19 to 20 go and make the disciples of all nations baptizing them in the in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit teaching them everything i have commanded you and i will be with you Till to the end of this earth so focusing best on this verse we have a curriculum that is called as equipped to serve where we learn how to make the disciples and it was it is such a privilege that uh, because of the COVID all the pastors were having enough time and uh, they were they they came up with a willingness with a commitment to translate this uh, curriculum equipped to serve in five different languages of India. So presently we have been uh, uh, working hard towards uh, finishing all those six books in different languages. So far we have done up to book three in five different languages, but not only that, because of COVID, we could also uh, form many small groups where pastors can train their congregation or the people those who are willing to uh, make the disciple they want to be the disciple as well as they want to go and make the disciples for christ and uh, it was such a privilege for me that god also opened another door in bangladesh who were my classmates while i was doing my bachelor of divinity and they opened the door for me to go and reach out to their garo baptist church and do this uh, tools of discipleship workshop through zoom call and we are planning to start this curriculum as it has been translated already in Bengali language so we will be starting off our training program for January that is what we are looking forward so my point to say is even though the COVID has uh, given us lots of challenges emotionally psychologically physically spiritually as well um, but God has been so faithful to each and every one of us doing his work 
and progressing his work more and more. There has been uh, times uh, I have been very frustrated because uh, one of the things I do is travel, go to India, go to other places and uh, meet uh, our staff and pastors uh, or I travel to other places to raise support and funds. So I have not been able to go anywhere else since February until now. But in COVID situation, God has provided more than ever. We have been able to support more than 300 pastors with COVID relief. We have uh, helped uh, um, uh, families in uh, India, uh, more than 300 families and more than 1000 people we have supported uh, during this period March until now uh, as they are struggling. In India, there are more than 1 million uh, COVID cases now and it's very desperate situation. But God uh, helped us uh, to be his hands and become blessing uh, through our relief work and through our encouragement, uh, through Zoom call and meetings and Bible studies. So even though there are challenges, but COVID has opened opportunities for us to minister to people. And as a family, we have no one, as my wife mentioned, we have no one, no extended family in Abbotsford or even in North America, we are just four of us. It's like COVID and uh, we just by ourselves, but God has been so faithful to us and we are so thankful to Whistler Community Church for our friends for supporting us. Uh, so not only in ministry wise, God also personally has blessed us in many ways, uh, especially personally for me, uh, God has opened another door this year at spring uh, where I was able to enroll to Master of Arts in uh, Marriage and Family Therapy program at X Seminary, Trinity Western University. And some of, your, some of you have supported me financially for my tuition fees. And, um, and God has been so good to me that I could complete the first year of my studies and two more years to go. And it is not only just, it is a career for me, but it is to help out many women who are in India and many different parts of this world who are going through different kinds of um, challenges like domestic violence and uh, women discrimination and lots of lots of issues are there where they are going through. So my passion is to train up many women leader who will be uh, who are gifted and called by God to use their lives and uh, I would like to train them and raise many counselors who will be able to help. Uh, this COVID also has uh, given us opportunity to spend more time and not going anywhere and uh, trusting God um, in this COVID situation and we are so grateful uh, to God and so grateful to, uh, grateful to friends and partners uh, for supporting us. So we wish um, you a Merry, a Merry Christmas, Christmas 2020 and a and New a blessed Year blessed and Happy New Year 2021. So we have a verse for you mm -hmm. and we would like to encourage you uh, with this verse uh, uh, the trusting God and believing uh, Him uh, in this COVID uh, situation and uh, here is the uh, verse. So Psalms 55, 22 says, Cast your burden upon the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, greetings from Kona, Hawaii, uh, from Jeff and Tracy Van Veen. We are a little bit surprised to be here right now. We were supposed to be back in Berlin, but uh, we had a lockdown happening in Germany and so we added a few weeks to our time here in Kona um, to be able to help move a few other projects forward instead of getting stuck in lockdowns.
we were invited to bring you a bit of a an year end update or a testimony of what God has been doing. And for those of you that receive our newsletters as well, we are just so excited about 2020 being a year of breakthrough. We started off this year in this very space with Craig and Linda Smith from Whistler Community Church, along with a few other of our family and friends, helping move things forward. Uh, it was, uh, we were looking forward to the year with great expectation, a year of breakthrough. What was that going to hold? Then we went to Brazil where we were at the Send, which was an event where we saw 150,000 mainly young people uh, gathering together in three stadiums across Brazil to praise and worship and commit into missions, uh, reaching out into their neighborhoods as well as abroad. And so these were incredibly positive starts to the year and we were really had a lot of anticipation and expectation of what God was going to do. However, then we started to hear more and more about this COVID and uh, it was just kind of, you know, a little bit concerning, even as we were traveling back to Germany in February, we were wondering what was going to happen. What was, what was God doing around the world? And we started a DTS in Berlin and, and our students were all able to get in before the lockdown happened. Mm -hmm. The amazing thing is that everybody actually stayed. They, they didn't look at leaving. They said, no, God called us here. We're going to pursue with faith and diligence uh, this next season. And so, indeed, we ran a DTS despite COVID lockdown. Uh, it got complicated, but uh, we were able to persevere. Our outreach was held primarily in Berlin. And so our students were able to minister to many people that were homeless or um, mar the refugees, marginally housed. Uh, we were able to serve with different churches and do, of course, a lot of ministry in the parks. In August this year, we had another incredible opportunity. The day that the borders opened in Europe, we were over scouting out and working with our YWAM Basel base on planning an initiative where we would go door to door offering a Bible to every home. In Switzerland, that's not really a cultural norm to go to somebody's door. And so uh, it took a lot of faith for the, the Swiss to join in and actually start to do this. But they were amazed at, once again, God's faithfulness and his timing. After months of isolation, Swiss were very open to having conversations about who God is and how he loves them and how he sent Jesus to die for them. And so we had incredible favor with the ones who engaged in conversation. And we were able to pray with many and give out many hundreds of Bibles. And not only was that something that we could do during that time but it, it launched a movement that they now are planning their fifth season of Bible distribution since even just last summer so we're really proud of them and all that they are able to do there's been a lot more support coming behind them for the project and we are able to again see the kingdom moving forward despite restrictions that would have us separate this fall, we were able to have another Discipleship Bible School start at the base in Berlin. So we had students come mainly from within Europe or ones who were already in the country and, and had visas to be able to stay. And they were just going to dig down and study the Bible for a period of three months at the base there. And so once that was established, everyone was going. Jeff and I came here to Kona, Hawaii to help with some projects and as well to help with the 60th event, the YWAM 60th event, which was long heralded again as being at the end of this year of breakthrough. What would we see happen during this time? You know, in person, we maybe could have hosted four or 5,000 people, but by the end of our week long celebration, because we went to a, a digital format, we were able to have a reach of over 150,000 viewers live from around 110 countries being translated into 15 languages. The logistics of trying to do something like that in person would have been nearly impossible, but it, due to the digital age, we were able to maximize the technology that's available and make it possible for others to be able to see. So check some of those uh, archived live streams out if you have not yet had a chance to do so. One of the challenges that Jeff and I have felt God speaking to us over this year is how are we to function in a priestly role 
And this is a call that is on every Christian, not just YWAMers or missionaries that are out on the field. This is you in your workplace. This is you in your school. This is you with your friends as you're playing or getting out on the mountains and into nature. How do we help point people wherever they're at towards a deeper encounter and relationship with God? And so many times we've just been repeating. You remember the blessing, the prayer and song that was going around the world at the start mm -hmm. of this epidemic? This is something that we want to be speaking out and singing out and praying out over people that God brings into our day-to-day -day path each day. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May his face shine upon you, be gracious to you, and may he give you peace. And so we, we just continue to look at how are we going to apply that to people around us on a daily basis uh, as we function in this role. Over the past couple of weeks, God's been speaking one passage over and over to me, and it is John 9, 4. It happens in the context of Jesus healing a, a man who was born blind, and a question uh, that the disciples posed to him about, why was this man blind? Was it sin of his own or sin of his parents? And Jesus saying, no, it actually was simply so that Jesus would be glorified. Uh, Jesus is the Son of God on um, and that healing act would be glorified. And then there's that challenge and it says, we must work the works of him who sent us as long as it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. And so I guess that passage about working the works of him who sent us while we can, this is something that has just felt a renewed urgency within my spirit that I wanna pass on to you, that we, continue to get off that couch. We continue to embrace the neighbors, whether we can do it physically or not, that we look for ways that we can bless and serve and look out for them, doing the works of Christ who sent us to make a difference, to be a light on a hill in this world around us. And so just keep our our eyes fixed on Jesus, be listening to the prompts of the Holy Spirit as to how we can be a blessing to people around us and then move forward in faith. I wanna encourage you to check out this uh, new video series. It's called Fragrance of Faith that was just launched by YWAM literally today. And uh, it's a series, it's a documentary of uh, stories of faith put together in a really inspiring way. And so uh, put the link at the, at the bottom of this and we'd love to see you able to join in and hear stories about broadly what God is doing around the world, not just within the two of us or within the little parts of the world that we happen to be involved, but on a broad scale, what God is doing and be inspired for how you can also be involved. This is uh, another year where uh, through through the the times of, of um, being being a little bit more quiet, things uh, around town or the city are, are uh, a little bit more muted. We we're just continuing to uh, get get into God's word, and uh, we're we're wanting to encourage you to to really cultivate a hunger for God's word. To um, w without His presence, without His His word, it, it's like what what is our purpose like uh, as believers we we want to know him we want to make him known we want to uh, like hear his voice and uh have him included in each of our days like as he's walking with us um through all of the the different things uh unknowns uh challenges we we want to like continue to renew our minds by getting into his word uh just spending some time to listen ask him questions uh, just mull over things maybe he said in the past. Remember those things. And uh, just align yourself with, with who he is. His character, his nature, he is faithful. And uh, his promises are always true. He is always good. So we, we just stand on solid ground when we, we are um, renewed by, by his presence and his word. And so we, we encourage you today to, to yeah. just continue to have hope um, for the future. He has good plans and purposes for you today. And uh, we, we just uh, are so grateful that we, we get to um, um, even just share uh, Christmas with you virtually. 
and uh, and we're looking forward to that day then we get to see you in person again um, we we'd love to invite you to uh, to join us whenever possible um, wherever we are in the world and uh, to um, if you have questions or, or prayer concerns let us know we would love to uh, stand with you in um, uh, yeah just praying for for God to clearly speak we we just want to uh, end this time by uh, by praying for you, uh, praying with you. Um, just a, a blessing that uh, um, uh, you would remember, like uh, the good things that God has done. That uh, that God will um, it help refresh you. That He will renew your strength. That He will renew your hope, and uh, that He will give you peace. That, uh, that you will be a light to the world around you. That uh, when you go to the grocery store, you're going to speak encouragement to the people that are at the, the till or in line. You're going to speak encouragement to the people at the gas station. You, you just be a person that just is filled with joy and hope. Um, so, um, God, we, we pray that you would just fill every person listening to this uh, right now, that they would be encouraged that their their spirit would would be refreshed. That uh, that their mind would would um, think about the thoughts that you're thinking about. That you that their heart would be full um, of expectation of what you're going to do and how you're going to break through um, in their day to day. In Jesus' name, Amen. So, so Malakaliki Maka, which means Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you all. We love you. Bye. Should nothing of our efforts stand, no legacy survive, unless the Lord does raise the house in vain its builders strive. To you who boast tomorrow's gain, Tell me, what is your life? A mist that vanishes at dawn, all glory be to Christ. All glory be to Christ our King, all glory be to Christ, His rule and reign will ever sing, all glory. His will be done, His kingdom come on earth as is above, who is Himself our daily bread. Praise Him, the Lord of love. Let living water satisfy the thirsty without price. We'll take a cup of kindness, yet all glory be to Christ. All glory be to Christ our King. All glory be to Christ. His rule and reign will ever sing. All glory be to Christ. The great I am, the faithful and the true, the Lamb who was for sin slain is making all things new. Behold, our God shall live with us and be our steadfast light, and we shall ere his people be all glory be to christ all glory be to christ our king all glory be to christ his rule and reign will ever sing all glory be to christ all glory be to christ our king